Hi guys, I am going to go over the first few questions of chapter seven now. In chapter seven, we're talking about um, about periodic trends and about how the nucleus, the protons and the electrons in the nucleus react with each other. So that way, whether or not the electrons are getting pulled in or they're getting more spread out, things along those lines, and how that changes on the periodic table. All right, so among elements 1 through 18, so that's a lot of elements there, which element or elements have the smallest effective nuclear charge? Well, when I originally did this, I went through all 18, all 18 elements. For instance, hydrogen, it has one electron, so it's 1s1. Helium is 1s2. Then lithium is 1s2, 2s1. And I kept going on and on and on. So from here, we can then look at the Z effective by saying that Z effective is equal to the number of protons. So the Z is the protons minus the S which is the electro electrons that are in the central or the core electrons. So for instance, if I'm looking at lithium, we have three protons in the middle. We have the first shell, which has 1s2. Then we have the second shell, which is 2s1. That 1s2 here, that's going to be your S. Those are the shielding electrons. That's why the that's why it's an S is because the S stands for shielding. So that means the Z effective here is equal to three for those protons minus these two electrons here, which are shielding. If they're in the same orbital, they're not going to be shielding. So for instance, with helium, the Z effective would be those two protons minus zero because both of those electrons are in the same orbital. So, so with the Z effective for helium, it's gonna be two, whereas lithium is only gonna be one. We can move on to um, to boron, we can take a look at that one. Boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Both of these are in the same shell, so they're not part of the shielding. The only one that's shielding is that 1s2, so that means the effective. Boron has five protons minus these two from the first energy level. So it has a Z effective of three. Again, the 2s2 and 2p1 don't count towards it. We can continue. And as we're doing this, you'll notice that there is a trend. So let's jump to nitrogen maybe. That has five electrons, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. So Z effective is those seven protons minus just these two. So that means the Z effective is five. Notice once again, I did not encounter those. So you'll notice that the Z effective, you'll see that it's actually starting to be like their valence electrons. So in this particular reactor, this particular system, the valence electrons are going to determine what the Z effective is. If I move down to, let's try sodium. Sodium is 11. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So 3s1 is our valence electrons here. All of this is our core, which means those are shielding. So that means sodium is 11 for the protons minus those 10 for our core electrons, 
which give us one, which is actually also the number of valence electrons they have. So if we go through this, we can make those comparisons. So if we are looking for um, the smallest, that means we're looking for the ones with the valence electron of just one. So that means the ones with valence electrons of one would be hydrogen, lithium, and sodium. All of those are the smallest because they all have a Z effective <laughs> equal to one. If we're looking at the largest, we're looking at the eight electrons. So again, we're looking for the largest here, the, lar the largest effective. So we're trying to figure out which of these we're subtracting the least amount from. So you notice that nitrogen was five. And then that means that if we did oxygen, oxygen would be six. Then we'd have fluorine. And then all the way up to neon. And once you get to neon, you're looking at eight. Because if we're looking at the electron configurations, neon has 10 electrons. So that's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So originally it had 10 protons. These two here, these two electrons are shielding. So that gives us eight. These are not shielding because they're all in the same energy. Even though there's a full octet, is still considered to be part of the same energy level. But I'm going to stop here because the bell is going to ring again. I just didn't want to re-record. Hopefully you're understanding this at the Z effective, the way that they're having you chart to look at it. You're really just looking at the valence electrons. And this was question number 13.